Thank you for joining us once again for our broadcast. And we're looking this week at the promises of God in relationship to uh, being wronged. And we all have been wronged, and we've already looked at, at a couple situations this week, the general picture found in Romans chapter 8. And then when somebody has truly wronged us and, and we're, we're tempted to get revenge, and God has called us to not do that, to step back and let him take care of that situation, and he promises that he will repay uh, if necessary, and we don't have to do that. So these are really good teachings. We're going to look today in Psalm 55, at this a wonderful psalm, but it is dealing with a situation in which the psalmist has been, uh, and most likely it is David, has been wronged by a friend. So it's one thing to be wronged by a co-worker, a neighbor, uh, somebody that doesn't matter too much in your life. It is something very different to be wronged by a friend. Because with a friendship, with any friendship, there's a level of trust. There is the idea that that person truly cares for you and you truly care for them. You enjoy each other's presence. And so if a friend wrongs you, and especially if that friend wrongs you purposely, it's very difficult. It is very painful, very harmful to us. And so how do we handle that? Well, we have in Psalm 55 a situation very similar to that that we can relate to. Let's take a look at that. In verse 12, it says, For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has magnified himself against me, then I can hide myself from him. But as you, a man my equal, my close companion, and my familiar friend. We who had sweet counsel together, walked in the house of God, in the throng. And so we see this person has been very intimate, very close, very, very good friendship. They've worshiped together. They've served the Lord together. They've, they've enjoyed one another. In verse 16, it says, As for me, I shall call upon God, and Yahweh shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will bring my complaint and my moan. He will hear my voice. So we see these verses here in the, in the next one as well. And he will redeem the, my soul in peace from the battle which is against me. For they are, stri they are many who strive against me. So we see David here who has a friend. Some believe this might be even a prophetic uh, teaching concerning what Judas did to Jesus. But be that as it may, David apparently had a friend. Some have guessed at who that friend is, but it was someone he had lived with, someone he's, who he counted on, someone he had worshipped with, and that person has turned on him. So what is David's response? And this is where uh, we need to go as well. David's response is, is in verse 16, I shall call upon the Lord. Now, so instead of seeking revenge, he calls on the Lord. He turns to the Lord. Why? Because he's, he's banking on the promise of God. And that promise is that he will save me. Now, David did not know necessarily how he would do that. Uh, he didn't have it, have it all mapped out. Uh, he didn't have God's battle plan in front of him. But he knew that God was a God who would not turn on him and, and who was his closest friend who would never, ever uh, deceive him and harm him on purpose. And so he believes that God will save him. That's the promise he's banking on. And so he says in the next verse, all day long, evening, morning, noon, I will bring my complaint to God. I will call out to God. I'm hurt. I have been harmed by this individual. And there's no question about it. And so I'm not going to just fluff it away and just ignore it. It's true. But I'm going to turn to God, and I'm going to believe that He will redeem my soul, verse 18. He will save me from whatever harm that could be there. We drop down to verse 22. He says, cast your burden upon Yahweh. So now he's perhaps turning to us, and he's using his own experience uh, to uh, point us in a direction that we should go as well under the inspiration of the Spirit. Cast your burden upon Yahweh, our the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. So he's telling us, let's follow the example that he gives us. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's, let's cast that burden upon him, and he will sustain you. Now, earlier he said he will save you. He will redeem you. Now he uses another term. He says, he will sustain you. He will uphold you. He will not let you stumble and fall. 
He'll never allow his righteous to be shaken. Now, this by this, he means that we're not going to crumble. We're not going to fall away. He's not going to allow that to happen. In and of ourselves, we're often very weak and sometimes fragile. And a, a broken friendship can really shake us. So he's not saying we couldn't be shaken in that way, but he is not going to allow us to be uh, destroyed. He's not going to allow us to collapse. But you, O oh God, will bring them down to the pit of corruption. So now we're back at this point to what we looked at yesterday. If vengeance is needed, the Lord is going to bring it. He will take care of it. That's not our job. Our job is to turn to him, cast our burden upon him, and believe in his promises. He will sustain us. Uh, he will redeem us. He will save us. He will not allow us to be destroyed by this situation. Those are wonderful promises, folks, because we know in and of ourselves we are weak and we can crumble and we can be shattered. But God will not allow us to be shattered. We can depend on him. We can count on him and on his promises. I hope this helps you in whatever circumstance you're in, and especially if you ever face that circumstance when a good friends, a, a good friend or friends have turned on you, which is one of the most devastating uh, encounters of life. But God will never do that. He is always with us, and he will always sustain us. <laughs> 